Land of the Long White Cloud or Middle Earth, New Zealand. New Zealand is our next vacation destination. Not deterred by a long flight, we leave Chicago on December 30th and arrive in Auckland on January 1st to 23, celebrating New Year's Eve somewhere over the Pacific Ocean. After a short one-day stay in Auckland, the first major attraction is the Hobbiton movie set in Matamata. The Lord of the Rings director Peter Jackson picked those rolling hills of a working farm as a movie set for his highly successful trilogy. It is a must-to-go destination for all movie lovers. So this you can open up? This one. Unfortunately not, we can't go inside this, so you can see our gardeners have oh. sewn it shut. Sorry, I meant the mailbox. You see oh, the mailbox, well, yes. Can be open. Yeah. So that's where we have the, uh, the, ring. the shocking proposal. The ring. <laughs> the ring. Yeah. But the actual set that they used for inside the house was somewhere else? Or was yes. Okay. So you can see a tiny bit of the inside that is decorated. That's actually just to give an illusion. There's a beautiful hobbit hole inside, but of course, I'm here to ruin the movie magic. Um, when you open up that door, it looks exactly like the painted hobbit hole or the other hobbit hole interiors you saw before. Um, all the interior shots, they were done in studios in Wellington, so they could create different sizes. Among North Island attractions are undoubtedly Mount Ruapahu and its vicinity. As an active volcano, it offers a lot of outdoor activities, both in winter and summer. Hiking is extremely popular in this volcanic region, and we settle on a relatively short two-hour hike to Taranaki Falls. We are heading back from our pilgrimage to Mount Dam as a tribute. Frodo Baggins. No, no, no. <laughs> For his dedication and sacrifice in saving Middle Earth and abolishing evil in the world. Our nearly 100 years old hotel, Chateau Tongariro, could easily serve as a backdrop to a horror movie like The Shining. Spacious lobby, buffet restaurant and creepy basement pool are among its attractions. After a short stay on the North Island, we head south and fly Domestic Air New Zealand. The first stop, Christchurch. The city was devastated about 10 years ago by major earthquakes and is slowly rebuilding. A tramway tour with city history tour is the last of the day attraction. The city is rebuilding from the ruins and once famous Anglican cathedral is still being restored. So if you're looking for somewhere for dinner, this is our major retail hospitality area. So in front of us, we've got 21 restaurants and bars all in a row. Just on the left here, uh, so plenty of choice. Now, if you just want a bar, there's quite a few bars. If you want some dinner, there's a of The following day, we set our GPS coordinates to Hermitage Hotel in the vicinity of Mount Cook. On our way to Southern Alps destination, we stop at the Lake Pukaki. The glacial, pristine, and chilly water offers an undeniably amazing experience. The road along the lake is filled with scenic views and vistas of Southern Alps. Hotel Hermitage is located in the valley with spectacular views of Mount Cook or Mount Araki in native Maori language. The tallest mountain of New Zealand is practically covered in clouds all the time. It will be our base for two days. A trip to Tasman Lake is planned for the next day. The mountain weather changes constantly and with cloud cover and rain we await a final decision patiently. Luckily the trip is on. Tasman Lake takes its name from the Tasman Glacier. Small icebergs separate from the glacier and float in the lake. The hotel hosts a small museum dedicated to the famous New Zealander Sir Edmund Hillary, who conquered Mount Everest and stayed in this hotel in the past. Our next destination is Queenstown, a city with numerous attractions and activities. However, before we arrive, we have one stop and attraction to visit. As far south as Lake Te Anau, there are some caves on the shores of the lake that offer spectacular views of unique insects called glowworms. 
These limestone caves are located on the western shore of Lake Te Anau, in the Fiordland region of New Zealand's South Island. The caves are home to thousands of glowworms, which emit a blue-green light that creates an otherworldly atmosphere. The glowworms are actually the larvae, and they use their light to attract prey and mates. To explore the caves, we take a guided tour which typically includes a short boat ride across Lake Te Anau to the cave entrance, a walk through the cave system and a boat ride through the underground waterways. The tour guides will provide us with interesting information about the history, geology and ecology of the caves as well as the life cycle of the glowworms. In the pitch black environment of the caves we can see tiny dots of light that resemble a night sky. Queenstown is a resort town located in the Otago region of New Zealand. The town is situated around an inlet known as Queenstown Bay on Lake Wakatipu. It is famously referred to as the adventure capital of the world as you can find almost any adventure activity you can imagine in Queenstown. Among the many attractions available we've decided to try the luge where you can ride in small plastic carts down the mountain. The limited steering and braking abilities of the carts provide an adrenaline kick and plenty of enjoyment. At the top of the mountain there are also spectacular views of Queenstown and the surrounding mountains. Hello. Here are the instructions and we're ready to go. Wine and cheese tasting at three nearby vineyards filled our afternoon. We visited Gibston Valley, Kinross and Mount Rosa vineyards. Some of the finest New Zealand wines are produced in this region and have received the highest international awards. New Zealand is home to beautiful fjords, with the most famous one being Milford Sound that attracts tourists from all over the world. The early morning bus takes us on a long tour as there is no direct short route to the destination. The fjord offers absolutely spectacular views and is a must-visit attraction with abundant waterfalls and breathtaking scenic views. On our trip back, we decided to take a short route and fly. I had the opportunity to co-pilot the small plane that took us above the peaks of the Southern Alps back to Queenstown. After safely returning to Queenstown, we enjoyed an evening out. The outdoor restaurants and music created a very relaxing atmosphere. It's time to leave Queenstown and head north to the wildlife preserve on an island in Lake Wanaka, which is a very exciting place. Enthusiasts of huge insects, as depicted in David Attenborough's documentaries, can admire them in their natural habitat. To reach the island, we take winding roads from Queenstown to Wanaka and then a boat to this tiny island, which offers a unique glimpse into the fauna and flora of glacial lakes. Hi! This. Peter Jackson calls his workshop, Weta Workshop. There are the biggest ones of these are called um, Weta Punga. That, that body is about that round and the legs are like chicken drumsticks. That is called Weta Punga and the Maori called it the god of ugly things. Okay, so this guy's been in the wars. He's been fighting because he's lost both his antennae. So he's been fighting with another male. This is a young testosterone filled uh, I would say equivalent human age 
of a 19 or 20 year old male. He's fully mature, he's got a head like a Ukrainian tank. So these are also nocturnal like that insect and you can see that insect if this guy or this guy here got in front of that that uh, wetter the insect he would take an arm off or a tail off really easily. Now I want you to feel how soft that is. Isn't that amazing? <laughs> feel that. <laughs> it's not what you expect, is it? <laughs> Our adventure continues as we head further north. Starting from Wanaka, we follow Highway 6 towards the western coast of New Zealand and eventually reach the small town of Haast. Highway 6 can easily rival Highway 1 in the United States as it takes us through a lush rainforest with rich vegetation, passing multiple bridges and wild beaches, all while providing a stunning backdrop of the Southern Alps. The scenic views and vistas along this route could easily be the set for an adventure movie. We then arrive at Franz Josef, a small town named after the nearby Franz Josef Glacier. The next day we have planned a glacier tour and helicopter ride, but in the afternoon we decide to take a hike along a partially dry riverbed to catch a glimpse of the glacier from a distance. As tempted as I am to fly my drone, my desire is quickly tamped down by the hefty fines warning on a nearby sign. Franz Josef Glacier Guides is a company that will take us on a hike. We will undergo a safety briefing and receive instructions from our guide and then take a short walk to reach the helipad. A local helicopter company can take us onto the glacier where we'll be equipped with crampons and hiking gear to traverse the ice formations and enjoy being mountaineers for a day. The flight to the glacier will take about 10 minutes and we can admire the sheer size and beauty of this place. Close, isn't it? You can imagine the ice is heading a flatter section of bedrock. It starts to friction builds. The ice behind it kind of catches up on it and just closes right back up. You still see these cracks. These crevasses no doubt will form soon, but the gradient needs to increase, so this is all, this is all moving about a metre a day. Fantastycznie. Pewnie nogi nie będę czuł później, ale... Worth it. Worth it. At midnight, we ventured into the rainforest to explore the glowworms. We used our kiwi toys, which we had purchased earlier that day at the kiwi center, to mimic the kiwi calls. Although we didn't see any kiwis, we spotted plenty of possums. The road from Franz Josef to Greymouth follows the west coast of the South Island as we travel northeast. While the scenery is still beautiful, the mountains are farther away from the coast. The weather suddenly changes upon arriving in Greymouth, where it becomes rainy and cold. After returning the car at a railway station, we board a train and head towards Christchurch, crossing the South Island. This train ride is one of the must-see attractions in New Zealand. Our time in the South Island has come to an end. After spending a night in Christchurch, we arrive in Rotorua on the North Island. Our vacation wouldn't be complete without experiencing a Maori cultural event in the evening. Kia ora, ladies and gentlemen, can you all say kia ora? Kia ora. Come on folks, we can do better than that. Everyone say kia ora! Kia ora! Kia ora ladies and gentlemen, welcome here to meet our Māori village. I'd like to introduce myself this evening. My name is Tomato Fakatangi Hanga Kova Bobo Tomateo Tsuripu Kaka. 
Pigimonga Horonu Kupo Kai Vidwa Gintana Tahu. But you can all call me Jason here this evening, folks. So if you've got any questions, feel free just to yell my name. I'll be more than happy to answer any questions you have here this evening. The vacation is almost over, but the ultimate experience of ziplining through Rotorua's rainforest made it unforgettable. Our friendly guides not only took us on a tour through the forest, but also took the time to explain the conservation efforts of the company. We walked across wobbly suspension bridges, ziplined on six different lines, and even used a rope to descend from a tree. It was truly the thrill of a lifetime. I'm with it. 